do you ever yearn for the deep? Wonder about what exactly could be out there in the universe? Well, come along with me in my anaconda, or I like to call it Exploraconda, the dude. We're going to take it nice and easy, and I'm going to show you how to get started and get out there. Start mapping your own adventure. We'll start off with a little quick little show of what we got going on in this here Exploraconda. No hard points, you don't need them. Very few utility mounts. I got a, a heat sink or two here, right? Core internals, we downgrade pretty much everything. We got an 8 slot for the power plant, it's 5A. You can overcharge it. Thrusters, I, I went with 5A because I need to boost. Uh, the space madness kicks in real fast if I don't have a boost button. Uh, all the way out with the frame shift drive. Uh, increased range, lightweight. Uh, you can lightweight some of these other things, and I didn't really do anything with my power distributor because I accidentally undid some stuff on it. Lightweight sensors. And over here in the optional internal slots, very little. 7A fuel scoop. Wait till you see this thing in action, it's crazy. Uh, auto field maintenance unit. Uh, Guardian frame shift drive booster, definitely much recommended. Shield generator maybe not, but I mean I've, I've wrecked my ship a few times. And I got the expanded arc capture on the, uh, the surface scanner. That comes in real handy. You get that efficiency bonus every time, I tell you what. So I'm going to show you what I like to do when I go out on a day trip. If I get a little, little yearning to get out there, but I don't really want to leave the bubble too far behind you know what I'm saying this isn't a week-long voyage this right here is a day trip folks it's a day trip so we're gonna go day tripping and, and uh, my first stop is always Jackson's lighthouse uh, it's like the uh, it's like the on-ramp to the uh, neutron highway feel me check it out You know when you see something like that during the loading screen, uh, you're fixing to see something pretty cool. And uh, neutron stars never disappoint. White dwarfs, uh, even we're gonna look at that in a minute, but uh, this is the star that you need right here. Uh, this is gonna enhance your jump range by like 400%. So uh, you're gonna get quite the distance here. And uh, I'm gonna show you how to do it. It's all in this trail right here. These stars have quite a large exclusion zone and usually you only get a quick glance at what that is. So my suggestion is zero throttle as soon as you jump into one of these systems. And then we're just gonna mosey our own we're just gonna mosey our way on towards the tip end of this ejection cone. And we're just gonna slide right in nice and easy. Take it nice and slow, you feel me? And you'll know when you're in there. Yeah, you get one of them. Your ship's gonna toss to and fro, but do your best to kind of stay in there. Frame shift charge super supercharge. Frame shift drive supercharge. Get the heck out of there. It's done. Be sure to buy the Neutron Star breakfast if you haven't already. In the panel here where you have the search bar, you got FSD boost, you want to click on that. There's some other options. I never mess with these options. I don't know what they do. Uh, yeah, what is this? I don't know. But basically you want to make sure that FSD boost is selected. And then we're just going to hold square and push on down. Not that, but you know, we're going to push on down and go below the galactic plane. Uh, is what we're going to do here eventually. Um, because you don't need to really go very far out ways. You just need to go up or down, and we're going to drop down quite a ways here. Uh, I kind of went too far. As you can see, I think I have 282 light years worth of jump range. Uh, my first uh, 4, 420 said, wait, we ain't got time for that. Um, we ain't got the charge for it. So uh, I think I settled here for a 277 light year jump. And um, what you can do is use uh, Spanch dot something. I'm going to get that up on the screen right here. <laughs> But uh, that's a neutron star plotter, so you can use those, and it'll get you. Really, you can go anywhere. I used it to go to the uh, the core, the galactic core, and uh, it worked worked out quite great. You know, every now and then you got to do some jumps in between 
but for a while there, especially once it gets more dense, you could just go from neutron star to neutron star to neutron star, only stopping uh, once your fuel tank gets close to empty. And as you can see, I'm not really using a whole lot of fuel to do this, and we are going 278 light years. 277, I can't read it. Uh, but yeah, it's pretty neat. It's pretty neat. It's a great way to do it. Uh, this scared the heck out of me at first when I was first started doing it. Uh, that, this is why you really need to bring with you a, uh, an auto fill maintenance unit because doing this is going to damage your FSD. Uh, doing it repeatedly damages it quite fast. But uh, yeah, there you go. And I just plotted a quick route back to Jameson Memorial so we can get an idea of really how far that is. Uh, six jumps, pretty much, give or take. Six jumps in one go. This right here, that right there is a, a white dwarf. Uh, and this one you can supercharge, but it only does it like, I think, 160%. And the exclusion zone, the exclusion zone is quite large. I've died twice to a... a <laughs> I've died twice to one of these stars. Not super fun. Your ship explodes. Uh, I I just avoid them. I like to look at them though. They're kind of they're kind of cool looking. Uh, so here's like a system that has been discovered, mapped. If you want to scan these planets, go for it. You're still gonna get paid for it. Uh, but it's like this one's been discovered but not mapped. So it's an icy body. I don't know that it's worth try you know flying out almost 4,000 light seconds out to do that. But if you want to put your name on it, you sure can. But that's basically the road to riches right there. Um, the, uh, these plants have been discovered, mapped, but you can go scan them again and get paid the same amount. Your name just isn't going to be on there. So a road to riches is a great way to get started early on. I'm going to go out here and map this one because I think it looks a bit suspicious of a uh, terraformable world. So let me, let me take a look here. turned out not to be terraformable. Uh, it'd be right under that description there at the top. It'll say this uh, planet is a, uh, if it can be terraformed or whatever, it's a, a candidate for terraformation. So I'm just going to keep going down, farther down. Eventually we're going to get to an area out here without having to go too terribly far where there's going to be undiscovered systems. And then once you get to it, there's like a pocket of them or something, you know, and you'll be able to just kind of go around. Uh, I've done this and I found Earth-like worlds out here. I found water worlds. Uh, high metal content worlds are quite valuable and those have a chance of being terraformable um, pretty nice right here we got OB a fine girl kiss me those top few uh, class stars the O B A F G M when I, I miss some OB a fine girl kiss me or KGB foam those are the scoopable stars so if you want to not actually get caught in a, like a T Tauri desert and not being able to scoop, have to call the fuel rats, you know, you can do that. Um, that's more of an issue if you're going to be heading out, <laughs> out towards uh, some of these other places you can go. But uh, here I found a water world. Uh, it's been mapped, but I'm going to map it. I'm going to map it again, because I'm going to get paid for it. Uh, I don't really bother with the icy bodies, just because they don't pay much. And uh, yeah, I don't know, I'm not going to, I get I get bored. So <laughs> I just don't mess with that. But this one almost looked like an Earth-like world at first, so... Uh, but it's kind of neat, yeah.
So when I honked in this system, it said 11 bodies and I'm only seeing three here. So I suspect we're gonna have another planet out here because the cursor goes out that far. And I'm also gonna bet that we have some moons under one or both of these dudes. So I'm gonna go into FSS, which I have set to triangle and R1. You can set it to whatever you like. And uh, these little signal sources right here, you'll get to figure out what these are. These are like usually that area gas giants. If you find one that's around here, this AL in spectral, that's very likely going to be an Earth-like world. Definitely scan that. That's just a lot of fun. They look really neat. You got like signal sources in this area. Usually these are going to be probably icy bodies, um, high metal content, rocky worlds. You'll figure that out. Once you get out there and get on a big trip, you'll start to realize, recognize what's what. So we're going to make the circle go from a dotted line to a whole line, that means you gotta lock onto it. So we're just gonna be looking for these blue flashy blobs like that one down there, I just about missed. And then I'm gonna run that bar until I get a whole circle. And then we zoom in, mine is set to trigger, like the first trigger. I use a HOTAS, so it's a little bit different. I use a flight stick. And uh, sometimes there are multiple layers. You'll, you'll zoom into one, it'll be another area. And then, so I, I zoomed in, I have two planets here, right? Icy body, blah, blah. And then you zoom back out. Make sure you catch them all though, see? Um, and then you can zoom back out. So it can go in like multiple depths. I'm having I'm having a hard time explaining this. But um, you know, you can zoom in multiple times. It just depends on how close together these bodies are. Uh, and then, you know, scan them and then zoom back out. Seven bodies. We go into the map. Nothing. Just the sun. So this 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 system has not been honked. It has not been FSS'd, and it has not been mapped. So this is going to be our our little secret. Unfortunately, it's all icy bodies. <laughs> but uh, anyway, it's it's got our name on it. You know what I mean? And see this one right here? It's behind the sun. It's not going to let you zoom in. All you got to do is take a little trip around that sun get within a eye shot of it where there's nothing obstructing it and you'll be able to finish up the scan. should note that your name's not going to appear right away. You got to go back to civilization and turn in your data, your uh, cartographical data. Um, I've never been back to a system that I've scanned, so I've never seen my name on anything, but you know, you know it's there, right? So this is how far we've gone. We're planning our trip back about 13, almost 1400 light years. And uh, the trip there, messing around out there and the trip back took me about two hours. Um, and I only used that one Neutron Boost. So it's really not bad. 22 jumps, oh my goodness. Put on some Guitar George, you know. Uh, <laughs> slap on some Beatles and just enjoy that ride back. It is, it's, this is such a zen game. You know what I mean? This is the most relaxing game I've ever played. Maybe not like in a, in a, in a hazardous res, you know, with a little ship. You know, that gets a little weird. 
But uh, this, this game is so great. These are a few screenshots from some of my previous expeditions. I, I, like I said, I went to Sagittarius A-Star. I'm kicking myself because it, it looks like I didn't take any screenshots. Uh, so that kind of stinks. But anyway. You can find like geographical, biological signals on some of these planets that you can get science from. There's just so much to do when out there. Uh, but anyway, that's all I got. Bass it out. Peace.